Okay, um, quite a few people have asked me to show on a video how to pour a baby. So I'm going to have a go at doing that. I don't know how good the video is going to be. This is the mould. I'm going to do Lucy. Now Lucy's my... This is the... This is a sculpt I made the mould out of. Usually the sculpt doesn't come out in one piece, but this one came out in almost one piece apart from the odd ear. Anyway, I don't need that. This is the body mould and this is the head mould. I do them separately so that we don't get a poor spout on the top of the head. So what I'm going to be doing, everybody makes moulds differently. I can't say what's the right way and the wrong way to do it. I've done it lots of moulds different ways um, and this is what I'm doing at the moment. It's not perfect. Um, it's probably not the right way but it's how I do it. So I do a seam down the back because, and I do it quite thickly but I also do a tiny little seam so that I can get to the hands and the feet when it's poured so that I can release the fingers without pulling too much because there's a lot of pulling goes on when you actually take the baby out of the mould. Um, so that's my mould. So I'm going to prepare it first. I'm going to use a spray, spray release. Um, I'm just going to show you on this chair because I've got so much stuff in here. The whole studio's closing in on me so I've not got a lot of space. Um, so what we do first is spray it to make sure that the silicone that I pour in the mould doesn't stick to the mould. Um, normally I do this outside because it stinks but it's pouring with rain outside so I'm not going to. So how I do it is I get to the bits I can get to. I use my hands to be honest to smooth it, make sure there's no bubbles or or fizzy bits because if you get the spray too close to it it kind of goes all fizzy like that. Um, so just make sure it's all smooth and try and get it into the arms and the legs. Again I do that I do that with my hands. So I spray quite a lot of spray release into the opening, trying not to breathe it in and then try and push it down into the hands with my hand and fingers. Make sure everything is covered. This is about the fourth baby I've got out of this mould, so it still has got some spray release from before. And I use my little slit that I use, my seam, to get it into the hands. So I use quite a lot of spray release. loads of it but I do find that it helps so pushing it into the fingers and the thumbs make sure all the fizziness has gone and it's all round sometimes you feel like your fingers are breaking off some people do a thinner mould and they can turn the arm inside out. Um, sometimes I do that but I find that the mould doesn't last as long if, you, if I do that. So, And in the other hand. Ow. If you spray, ow. If you spray too close to your fingers it freezes them. Again, I've moulded in a similar way with a seam. 
so I can do a thicker mould so it's a bit more more substantial. Again, I'm going to use the spray release. Seriously, don't do this in, in the house. It uh, stinks. It's I'm sure it's not good to breathe in. But, you know, things we do for our art. It's pretty good, really. Make sure you get it into the nose and the ears. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle your fing finger around inside all the little... holy bits. Okay, so that's that's spray release. Right, what I'm going to do now is is glue the seals. So the back seal, the two hands and the two feet so that the so the silicone doesn't obviously drip out. Uh, and what I'm going to use is Platsil gel because it dries really really quickly. I love Platsil for painting and for patching up and things because it dries really quickly and you can force cure it really quickly so I'm just going to mix up some Platsil I'm just going to paste over the seam over the top of it here shut it and paste over it to give it a nice thickish but not that thick that it's going to make the mould change shape and the same on the other side and find it There's not going to be any particular pressure on this, it just needs to be a good seal. As Platsil cures, it goes a kind of whitey colour. That's not the Platsil gel colour, changing colour. It's actually just, I've stirred it really quickly, it's got loads of air bubbles in it, so it's the air bubbles showing through. It doesn't matter for this. Hands splits there and underneath, I think. Yeah, underneath on that one, so I'll just do this one. Now to do the back seam, well, what I'm going to do, this is called a glove mould and this is the mother mould which keeps the glove mould in shape while the baby's being poured and cured. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a cushion underneath because I don't want to squash the hands because the seam might open. There we are. The glove mould sits inside this solid mould. And it, it just sits in nicely because it's been made, made around it. So I'm just going to sit it in there while I do this seam. As you can see, it closes really naturally. But I'm going to... Yeah, that's just about okay. I'm going to put silicone inside it to seal it again, like I did with the others. So... Uh, curing fast this so I'm going to put some on the inside just to keep the seal shut that will that will cure in its own time because I can't put, apply heat directly to it but to be honest this silicone cures in about 30 minutes probably 
probably quicker in this warmer weather. So I'm going to just let that sit, let it find its own position. And then just, I'm just going to cover the seal. This is to stop anything leaking out. I'm just going to put this one on one side because I want to do the head mould now. Um, I think I'm going to have to mix some more silicone for that. So I'll just I'll leave that there. So this is Lucy's head mould. I'm just going to mix some more silicone. It's just a case of making sure that these meet correctly. I always do bubbles on the, on the inside of my seals, seams, so that I know where they meet. So I'll take off any excess silicone from the last pour. Okay, so this is the mother mould for Lucy, for the Lucy head. Um, I fit it into this one first, so it fits exactly. All the lumps and bumps on the mould will will slot nicely into into there like that. So it just slots straight in. I make my mother moulds out of <clears throat> something called freeform air, which is an epoxy putty, and basically it. You just mix two pieces together and it, it, it hardens eventually. So as you can see, that's a really good fit. And it's not that important to put clamps on it or anything. So I just use, I just use rubber, rubber bands really, just to hold the two pieces of mother mould together. If, if, if the glove mould was not as, not as thick as this, then I'd probably want the mother mould to, to stay in place a bit more but this is just giving it support so that's ready that's ready to pour that one and oh dear I'll do the same with the body so I do I, I usually do my bodies in three parts um, that way it's so it's sort of like a triangle um, so this piece goes up to the seam on one side and the other piece goes up to the seam on the other side so it's just a case of easing it in making sure that it's not that no parts of the glove mould are pinched and the same on the other side Using it over the arm and the leg. Make sure it's all in one piece. So that's that's how it ends up looking. Um, the seam is open so that it, it squashes the seam together. I deliberately did it like that. So what I'm going to do now is just hold them together. I can't. I, I haven't got any rubber bands big enough for this, so I use a strap. These are just luggage straps. There's two or three. <clears throat> so, one around the middle. Make sure that I only have it around the actual mother mould, not around the rubber bit, or it could squash it. Squish it. So, tight as I can get it around the middle. Make 
make sure that it's not over any of these bits. I always leave the hands and feet out because when I'm pouring it I like to be able to prod at them, not too much because I don't want the seal to come off, but prod at them to make sure the air bubbles are coming out of there. I want to know exactly where the toes are so I can give them taps and things and the same with the fingers. away. Oh, hang on. Okay, that'll do. So, Molly is ready to pour. Well, Lucy it is actually. I'm using the same body mould for Molly and Lucy. So, so this one's going to be Lucy, so Lucy's ready to pour. I'm just going to... Now, I tint the bucket before I pour it. That way, every pour is the same colour. Um, from this bucket. Not everybody does it that way, it's just how I do it. Um, the disadvantage is if you want to change the colour you've got to buy a new bucket of, um, of silicone but you know it, needs, it uses nearly a whole one for a baby anyway so. Um, I use ordinary kitchen scales um, and I use these paint buckets to pour. Uh, I only have quite a small degasser and it fits in really nicely so I that's what I use. Okay I'm going to pour about 750 grams of A and 750 grams of B so I'm going to give it a stir first. They say you should stir it really well and there's always gunk at the bottom but I actually don't stir the gunk up into the silicone because I find it just gives it lumps so I try and just, uh, I just use the stuff above the gunk that's settled. Maybe you don't get gunk if you're in the USA. Um, it may be just because it's coming all the way over to the UK. Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to put some gloves on. Um, I think you're supposed to pigment the B bucket um, if you're going to pigment one, but I've never had a problem with it and it's what I do, so I've, I've stuck to it. So I'm going to pour about 700 grams, 750 grams oops, that's 800 grams, that's okay and the same of B don't use the same stirring stick for A and B obviously Again, B's got some gunk at the bottom. I just scrape off the top of the gunk and um, stir it. I don't use the gunk. As you can see, there's a bit of gunk there. Um, okay, zero it off and just under 800 again of this. Okay, that's the absolute maximum I can do in this bucket because when I degas it, all the bubbles come up and it does sometimes look like it's going to spill over. Okay, right, I'm going to give this a stir. Obviously. Make sure you get it from around the sides and the bottom of this. Oh, 
once the colour is uniform there's a good chance it's it's all stirred in together. The more, the more you stir it the more bubbles you're going to get but that's okay because they all come out in the degasser. Okay, right, this is my degasser, it's a bit messy, but it does the trick. It's only a small one, and basically I pop the bucket in there, as I say it'll probably come up and spill over, put the lid on, turn the taps, and switch it on. When I switch it on, it, this thing will go round, and when it gets to about 30, just under 30, I switch it off. And stop the tap off. Okay, and switch the tap off. Now, I don't know if you can see but all the bubbles are coming up. It looks like it's boiling. It comes up and up and up to the top of the bucket. I don't know if you can actually see that. Um, and it's bubbling away. That's all the air being sucked up to the surface and then disperse. It's a complete vacuum in there. As you can see, they're all bubbling, bubbling. It looks almost as if it's got heat in there, but it's just the air being sucked up through the through the silicone so I'll just leave that for a few, few couple of minutes until all the air has dispersed okay should be done now I'm just going to let the vacuum out So that bucket of silicone has no air in it at all. So I'm going to pour this silicone into the mould. The theory is that you pour from a height uh, to the lowest point and it pushes the air upwards but to be honest in a mould like this where it's got so many nooks and crannies it doesn't make that much difference I don't think. So this bucket of silicone will half fill this mould. It takes about double that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is swish this mould around so that the silicone goes into every little bit of it, into the feet, into the hands, into the into the tummy, the, the, the back, everything. So that it whoop, sometimes it comes out a little bit. So, so that it's it's virtually just coated everything and then just sits the rest of it sits. So in I'm going to leave this face down so that the silicone doesn't come out the hole, but so that silicone can come into the toes and the fingers and start to settle, hopefully. So I'm just going to put a cushion underneath it here and hopefully the silicone won't start dribbling into the hole just yet. No, it's fine. So I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being while I pour the next, the next bucket full.
and then I'll do the head. So I just sit it on the floor. all right okay so I'm going to pour my head now um, the main problem with the head is usually the ears it's really really difficult to get both ears and earlobes out um you, you, it's it's really really difficult right I'll do again every direction including upside down knock it rock it tap it it's only small but it's really important that the bubbles come out of these ears you won't always get them out but you have to bear in mind also that the bubble will come out of the bottom ear and straight into the top ear, this ear. So sort of move it around, try and get the bubbles to go up into the neck rather than into the other ears. Okay, well... While I'm waiting for that to cure, I'm just going to do a pour of this little mini, mini baby, uh, Christopher Robin. So I'm going to, again, seal the seam, because I do tend to do seams on most of my moulds. I don't like stretching them too much. Okay. So this is more like a traditional glove mould, it's, it's thinner than the other one so you can turn it inside out um, but I've still done a seam down the back, not all the way up to the head because I feel it's easier to fix it in place because it's got the two, two areas that, 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 that aren't cut. So. I'm going to first of all do the mould release on it. Now again it's important to get it into all the little little bits. So what I'm going to do is actually pull the arm inside out to get to the fingers and quickly spread it. I don't like stretching it for too long. it into all the little fingers. Try and push down into each finger. It only takes one to be missed and you end up tearing the finger off when you're pulling it out. Again I've used this mould a couple of times so it has got some mould release on it but you have to spray it every time because a certain amount of it comes off on the cast. Here we are. Back inside out, let's give it a squish, make sure it's completely covered. And the other, other arm. You need quite strong fingers for this.
I don't have a seam in, in the middle of the foot or the hand like I do with the others because I can get to the foot and the hand by turning it inside out. in the head. On this one the head is part of the mould so what will happen when it's when it comes out of the mould you'll see it'll have a pore spout at the top which you can't have it both ways but on a smaller smaller baby it's not so bad. Okay so that's the mould release more or less so I'm going to do the same as I did before and lay the baby down in the mould face down on the side of the mould so it should fit in really nicely not to force it because it'll have a exact it'll be an exact fit so if you get it in the wrong angle you could get the mould pinched there we are so and it's not quite so easy to glue because the seam's not as big as the one on the other one. So I'm just going to let the seam find its own position. warmer now and this silicone is curing almost as quickly as I've mixed it. Goodness knows what it's like in a warm country. And we're talking about the UK in September now. in place from the inside with a mixing stick. I wouldn't normally use silicone when it's starting to cure like this, not for painting anyway, but as it's just going to seal, go over the seal, it's, um, 
that's fine. some more silicone up. To put over the whole thing. Make sure it's got a good seal on it. too thick because it's going to make it um, bulge out onto that so just need to spread it out a bit but I don't want it I don't want any of the silicone inside the baby seeping out. It will cause some seepage down the line of the seam and you'll get a you'll get a ridge, a very, very thin ridge coming down, but that's okay, we can trim that and um, fix it so that it's it's not visible at all in the end. Okay. Need to make sure that none of this gets pinched in the outer mould because you can see it goes over the glove mould but you can easily pinch some of the rubber which means that the baby ends up with a, a wonky limb or something so that's not too bad. I like to keep it fairly relaxed not too too tight so that the silicone can find its own shape. Right I'm just going to pop plastic bands on this to keep it together all it needs and it's ready to pour just make sure it's not over any any of the rubber bits it's actually broke when I was getting the sculpt out of the mould the uh, mother mould past the mother mould snapped off but that's that's fine as long as it keeps its, its basic shape that's fine it's just holding it in place so that we can uh, stand it up or whatever. Right, so that's ready to pour. It's 
been nearly five hours, so it's a four hour cure in reasonably warm weather, so, and it is warm now, so it's well cured. So I'm going to take the baby out of the mould. So I'll take these straps off. And remove the mother mould, the hard shell, from the glove mould. So there's the body, and then there's the head. Okay. Because we glued the seam together it's going to be stuck but not permanently stuck because of the ease release, the release uh, agent so we can pull it apart like this. I don't know if the camera can see it. So here's our head. Get rid of the excess silicone on the seal. Kind of. Alright, there we go. We have got a bit of a bubble in the ear. And the other one's perfect. Okay, I'm going to turn it out as quickly as possible so we don't get any dents on it. There we are. And there we have our baby. Obviously, no eyes yet. We've got those little skin tag things we can we can cut off uh, bubble on the ear we can we can fix that so and again a little bit of a seam but we can fix that as well plus a load of hairs uh, it attracts the hairs obviously tiny little bubble underneath the chin we can fix that and a bit of trimming to do so yeah pretty good pretty good really cute so that's Lucy's head. Okay. Let's see if we can get her body out. Now this is another matter altogether. It takes quite a long time to pull the body out and quite a lot of effort. So again we're going to pull the seam apart like I did before. Now the arms, because I can't turn it inside out, I have to settle for more or less brute force. So what I'm going to do is open up where the seam was. This is where I uh, painted over the seam earlier. And release the hand. Few little bubbles in the hand, not brilliant, but that can be sorted. I'll pop it back in there. The other side. fingers so I'll push those back in so that I can pull it out through the body okay and it's a case of drugging now not everybody does it like this but I find this is the way that works for me. There we go, first hand out. Tiny little bit of a seam, which can easily be sorted out. Try the other arm. Just get 
hold of it again. It doesn't half hurt your fingers. And there we go. So there she is. There's her arms out. With the legs. Same thing, find where I've cut my seam. I find this is the only way I can do it because the fingers and toes are very fragile and if you pull at them they they they, they could they could split away. So this way I can get the fingers and toes out like that, little toes. And then pull it out through the leg. Little feet, put them back in, and now pull the whole thing out through the the bottom. This is a difficult bit. You have to be careful. You don't dig your fingers into the silicone. You make permanent damage. This is where the seam not quite right but that's okay because the back seam is easily sorted out it's really really hard to get this out it's worse than a Proper birth. There we go. First leg out. Try for the second leg. Nearly. Nearly there. There she goes. And she's born. Oh. Right, so there she is. Little Lucy.